Welcome to the beginning of the end, because this right now, the 8th of January, 2022 will be the final time you can ever buy a BMW Z3 so cheap. Autocar magazine in 2019, when they were looking at this car as a potential future classic, they stated that used prices for a high mileage, 120,000 mile car started at 750 pounds. Now in 2022, the cheapest you can get one on Autotrader in the UK is 1,800 pounds. And Autocar stated that the prices hit a ceiling of 10,000 pounds. Now it's 13,000 pounds. In two years time, 2024, I honestly believe the cheapest you'll be able to get a BMW Z3 for will be £5,000. And when it hits the magical 30 year mark in just four years time, £10,000. I honestly think £10,000 will be the cheapest you will ever, ever be able to see one of these again. Forget about anything you thought you knew about the Z3. This is an absolute bang on future classic in the making. Probably the only reason you've never seriously considered one of these as a future classic is because it's a victim of its own success. These sold nearly 300,000. Almost 300,000 of these found owners. They were a gigantic sales success. But if you forget about how well it did, what you've got here is an unbelievably good looking European sports car. Let's do a front to back because I think this is one of the best looking two-seater convertibles ever made. It is an absolute stunner, gigantic bonnet. This is the 1.9 litre petrol engine, which was by far the most popular. And it's such a muscular looking vehicle. I'm a really, really gigantic fan of these. I really do think they are one of the best looking, most handsome two-seater convertibles out there that you can possibly get. So huge bonnet coming around to the side, the muscular arches, front and back. It's even on this, which is probably one of the base, well, which is one of the base models, they all look brilliant and muscular. Great looking vents there with a BMW logo. And you know what's so great about cars like this? This is the absolute sweet spot in terms of a modern classic in the waiting, or a classic in the waiting, with all of the, the, the rawness that you get from a classic, but it's got the modern reliability, it's got the fuel injection, it's relatively safe. Look at the size of the door cards, they've got this, they've got that slightly old school tinny sound when you close it, I love that. Right, boot. Not much space, but then you know what? You don't buy this car for space. Rear, beautifully simple, very small car as well. S small proportions, both widthwise and lengthwise. So it's incredibly easy to drive. Great looking rear arches. And we come through here to the cockpit. It's just so simple. I love it. You, you get nothing at all. You just get some fan switches. This is the automatic version. Speedo in the middle, a couple of fans, and absolutely nothing else. A little bit of wood trim there, and classic, classic German practicality. Watch how easy this is to put the roof up. So lift the roof, and all it is, is two clips. Roof on, and unclip. Push it through like that, jump out. <laughs> Who needs an electric roof? There's absolutely no need to waste your time and money with all of those electric motors when you can just do it so easily yourself. So that's it, very brief overview of the car. Shall I say it now? I'll say it, this car's history. This car started its life in Mallorca. It was then bought by a Saudi prince and headed over to Dubai for a few years. It was then bought back and shipped back to Mallorca before it found its home here with a Welshman in Tenerife. And I'd like to say a gigantic thank you for Neil for lending me this car for 24 hours. I know, I usually do motorbike related stuff, but I'm also a gigantic, gigantic car fan. And these types of cars, 
the cars that are attainable classics and they're going somewhere. This really, really excites me. This is not just a great car to own, but you can actually sell this to yourself and it would make sense as an actual financially good investment one of these i love stuff like this so we've got this for the day we are so so lucky with the weather blue skies we're going to head up into the mountains of tenerife and just find out how much fun you can have with just about and i do mean just about a sub two thousand pound car but i promise you it's not going to be like that for long There's something extremely magical driving into the mountains in Tenerife and then you get stuck behind one of these, which is still common sight, it's still commonplace here, these old Mercedes. It's a magical thing. No worries about how fast you're going, just enjoying every second in your understated, over-engineered German car. That is a beautiful thing and the absolute sweet spot for Mercedes in their timeline, I think. They are just the most beautifully elegant cars. And you know what? I don't even want to go fast. I just want to sit here, enjoy the blue sky, the scenery, the cacti, the palm trees, and look at the back of that Mercedes. When the Z3 came out in 1996, it had a hard time from the motoring journalists. They said it felt sluggish, it felt too heavy, you didn't have connection with the road, it wasn't dynamic. They said the MX-5 was a much, much more dynamic place to be. And I owned the MX-5 of that era. And now having driven this and in my mind putting them side by side, that is true. The MX-5 does feel more dynamic, it feels lighter, it feels more chuckable. You have more feeling from the front of the, the car. The front tyres give you more feedback in the MX-5. So it probably is a little bit more fun driving the MX-5. But this, the Z3, this feels more special. When I get into this car, I do feel more special. It's that BMW build quality, the over-engineering, the quality of the interior even, and it's subjective, the styling. I prefer the styling of this car. And let's be honest, if you're going out there and you're looking for a classic two-seater car, if you're looking for a classic car, you're not looking for the first word in dynamism. If you want the fastest, most dynamic sports car out there, you're going to go out and you're going to buy a brand new sports car because brand new cars are always going to be the best handling, fastest and most dynamic vehicles. You're looking 
for a classic because of the way it makes you feel. So this may not be as good dynamically as the MX-5, but now time has been friendly. Time has been kind to the BMW Z3 because we don't remember and we don't really care about how good a handling car is once it gets to that classic status car because that's not what we're looking for. So this now Z3, it makes more sense than it's ever made before. You've got me questioning my position Am I just feeling out? Space, not with as much grace. Am I a second choice of all the not a Royce Royce? Dresses and lace help me now. Oh, oh. If it's not my want to pretend that this 1.9 litre engine is fast or powerful and I also don't want to pretend that this automatic gearbox is good because the gearbox won't win any awards and earlier I struggled overtaking a 125cc scooter but what this Z3 is is for me a car built in the absolute sweet spot of car manufacturing and that is the mid 1990s this car has the rawness feel and character of a classic car. It's not that it feels worse built than, mod than a modern car, but it feels less substantial because of the absence of all of the different safety equipment and everything else that you get to cocoon you in these modern cars. This has a rawness to it, but it also has an everyday build quality and reliability to it that you've got from these mid 1990s German cars. It's got good rust proofing, you can use it every day. The engine in this car is exactly the same engine that you get in the BMW 3 Series. In fact, most of the components in this car you could probably find in some of the 3 Series, whether it's from the current model when this was built or even maybe the model before. So this is the sweet spot. You can use this as an everyday car. You don't need to cosset it. You don't need to wipe it down every time you drive. You can get out there, you can enjoy it, and you can trust that it will get you home after a long day's driving. Oh God. Oh. I think Monica and I are suffering from altitude sickness. That's the second time it's happened in Tenerife. The road gets to about 2.4 kilometers high and you don't realize it, but it's very, very gradual. You start getting a headache and then you just start feeling like you've got a bit of a hangover. And that, that's just a normal road. Like, and I said to Monica, God, do, do you feel okay? She's like, no, I feel ill. And we've been racing down, racing down as quickly as we can. And I feel better now, but genuinely, even on normal roads in Tenerife, two and a half kilometers, Altitude sickness. So right now we're on the north of the island and I mean you can mistake bits of this for parts of the UK. It's so much more green and lush. It's complete, it's a different planet to the touristy desert arid south here. I mean look you've got grass for one. So we're going to head to Puerto de la Cruz, grab some lunch, park up the BMW and just chill out. Hopefully a bit of food will sort us out, get rid of this altitude sickness and someone let me know if it is possible to get altitude sickness at 2.4 kilometers otherwise I'm looking a bit pathetic.
and it's a bit cooler up here so we've put the roof on monica can you show if you're wide angle how much room there is in the cockpit with the roof on because actually i'm six foot one plenty of leg room here for me yeah. and for monica at about five foot six or so you can almost go fast asleep flat out there <laughs> yes this, it's comfy isn't it yes very it's comfy. really nice actually for two people i mean the last Honestly, the last two-seater convertible Monica and I were in was about six months ago, and that was a Caterham. So, that was hell. Yeah, that was pretty hellish, actually. That was seriously unpleasant. But this is nice. No cup holders, which is a shame, but it's automatic, so I can just hold my coffee in my right hand. But it's a perfectly nice, spacious place to be. And if you look over the bonnet, you've just got that beautiful, long, elegant bonnet ahead of you. It's a very, very nice cockpit to be in. And you can see everything's so simple, like the dials. You don't have all of these funny riding or driving modes and everything else. Like, complete simplicity, and it's all the better for it. Okay, right, we are heading back to the warmth. So we're going to head to the south coast of Tenerife now and take the coastal road all the way along to the south, probably south-southwest of the island. Basically get to the warm desert-like area. It's a good coffee, but why, why is it so small? I don't like that. It's a cafe con leche. I, I never know if that's the same as cafe latte that we call it in England, but it's tiny. It's delicious, but I've loved it twice the size. Now, after spending the day with this car, I, I do understand, honestly, why the journalists of the day gave it mixed marks, you know, threes out of fives, things like that. I get it. It isn't the most dynamic car. It isn't. I mean, even Monica was saying when, when we were both in it earlier, look, this isn't a sports car. It's not. It doesn't feel dynamic. You don't feel incredibly connected to every single element, every single bump on the road. It's not a car that you desperately want to push, or at least not in this 1.9 litre engine, guys. But what it is, is a car that really does make you feel very, very special. We've had it almost the entirety of the day now, and it's a very, very nice car to be in, and it's an incredibly nice place to, to be for the whole day. It's a lovely car, and you feel, you really do feel incredibly special in this car. I mean, you feel like you've made it in this car, and the fact that you can feel so good in a car that, if you get the cheapest one at least, is under £2,000. Oh, that's superb.
you know, I had a bit of an epiphany moment there. We were driving along the coast with the sun setting right in front of us and I just was sitting there in this classic European two-seater thinking, this is me. You know, everyone's got their kind of car that suits them and these, well, these small European cars, this small European two-seater is an absolute joy to live with. It's been amazing and now it's completely solidified in my mind that I really, really do want one. And if we look at values, look at all of the valuable German, either sports cars or two-seaters, things like that. Look at the Porsche 944 that used to be completely worthless. Values have just gone up to 8,000 pounds. Look at every single Mercedes SL. They all drop down to almost complete worthlessness at 5K. And then what happens? They all start shooting up. And now SLs that used to be worth 5K, I have people contacting me all the time saying, Freddy, I was offered that SL for four or 5K and now guess what? 18K minimum for one of those. And the same is going to happen with this. And we are so close to that happening. And with the exact competition, you've got the Mercedes SLK, you've got the Mazda MX-5, and you've got the Audi TT as three of the competitors from the era. They're all sitting at around about the 1,000 mark for the cheapest. Maybe the SLK is about one and a half K. This this has started climbing faster than the rest of them and the higher end versions or the more expensive versions of the Z3 are more expensive than all of those Mazdas, Audis and Mercedes. This is the car out of the lot of them that's going to go up in value fastest. You've also then got the Alfa Romeo GTV and you've got the Fiat Coupe. All of the cars I've mentioned, all of them, have been sitting around a thousand pound mark for a while, but guess what? The Fiat Coupe has now gone off into the stratosphere. There are only three available on Auto Trader. Cheapest one, four thousand pounds. All of that selection of cars, they are all only going one way. And I honestly think maybe with the Fiat Coupe, this is the pick of them. And for me, this is the best looking of the lot. And you know what else has happened? The Z3 has now just started costing more than the Z4. Absolute proof, absolute proof that we are dealing with a classic in the making here. If, if you don't go out and buy one of these within the next, I was about to say three years, within the next six, six months to 12 months, within the next year to half a year, something like that, you're going to be looking back in a couple of years time wishing you'd have bought it and talking about how you remember these cars being sub a thousand pounds, sub two thousand pounds. And you may ask, well, Freddie, put your money where your mouth is. I wish I could, but I'm on the island of Tenerife and I need the Fiat 500 to relocate back with everything we own. And this just will not fit it, but I promise you, hand on heart, if I had the ability to have it, if I had just even a driveway, somewhere to store it, I think this car will be a better investment than almost any stock or share you're looking to invest in. So there we have it. Before I go, I'm incredibly curious. I know I've mentioned the Alfa Romeo GTV, the Fiat Coupe, the Mercedes SLK, the Audi TT and the Mazda MX-5. What are your thoughts on the next bang on? classic that's going into the stratosphere either out of the cars i've mentioned or something else from around about this era 1996 kind of mid 90s era what's the next big thing after having this car now for a day i really do understand it when you're dealing with classic cars forget about the power it's all about how they make you feel that that soul that character that history that you've got right there feeling like you're driving something very very special it's a fine wine right got it until tomorrow 10 a.m got to go and make the most of it we'll see you in the next one monocross see you later